Hello everyone, this one's going to be incredibly heavy today, so trigger warnings for sexual assault and sexual harassment that I know are going to be in this uh, article. If there's anything else, I do apologise for not giving you prior warning because I haven't read it fully yet. I'll be reading it as we go along. Um, a couple of things to point out here. The shareholders calling for him to resign are not doing it at the kindness of their hearts they're doing it to protect the share price of the company and this kind of thing you know this explosive expose will damage the company bottom line with shares so they don't give a shit they never have they're just trying to protect their investment that they've made in the company this company regularly avoids tax and if they paid their fair share a small increment of people's lives would be improved by extra money to be able to spend on public services, for example. So this company's always been largely immoral. And best of luck to um, all of the employees who are trying to, you know, put enough pressure on Activision Blizzard to get him to fuck off, really. Because there's zero tolerance policy from now on, where they said a, a few months ago, was complete bullshit, wasn't it? Because it's zero tolerance to, like, a standard employee, but the whole bastard setup that oversaw it and knew about it, and maybe even partook in it, they're above the rules. But we knew that anyway. Just watch the, that Epstein documentary on Netflix, you know? That man was allowed to make a fucking plea deal to get his sentence lower for being a nonce, you know? That's how fucked up society is. That's why, you know, people are mad and frustrated with the way things are and want radical change. Also, a final point. Fucking Eurogamer, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg. I have no idea how many others put this behind a paywall, you know. A small story like the GTA trilogy being coming out as a giant meme and it's really shit. That's tiny compared to this shit. You could read that everywhere and nothing was behind a paywall. But this, possibly the biggest story in gaming news history, they're profiting off it. They're profiting off of stories about sexual harassment and sexual assault and have been for a very long time. And I fucking don't like it. It's incredibly immoral. It really is. It's one of those things that you shouldn't profit off of, to be honest. And the problem I have it the most is they pretend that they want to see change by making the stories and their exposés, but they're literally making it more difficult for people to hold this bastard account because they can't get to the full information that they need to, you know, start the social movement or whatever to get it trending on Twitter so that the people at the higher ups going, oh dear, we have a bit of a problem on our hands for the stock price or whatever. So I would like to thank Laura Shortridge Scott, who uh, posted the archive link, so I can actually read this. Activision CEO Bobby Cotting knew for years about sexual misconduct allegations at video game giant. Now, going to be honest with you, that title does not tell the main story by any means whatsoever. It's strangely downplaying. It's not the first time I've seen a title regarding this. If you remember the second video about Ubisoft, I wondered why they downplayed the ongoing situation at Ubisoft Singapore, but they did. And I wonder if it's like they fear being, having like, the media itself fears of being sued or something for libel or whatever. That must be a concern because this is this is going to get really fucking dark about Mr. Kotick. It starts off not great, but it gets so much worse. So this is all designed to point out that he's received multiple emails about allegations and events that have happened over the company but he's just feigned ignorance this whole time. And there are new uh, allegations and survivors to put in, so I thought I would share some of their stories, you know. A lawyer for a former employee at Sledgehammer Games, 
alleged that in an email her client had been raped in 2016 and 2017 by a male supervisor after she had been pressured to consume too much alcohol in the office and at work events. The female employee reported the incidents to Sledgehammer's human resources department and other supervisors, but nothing happened according to the email, which threatened a lawsuit. Within months of receiving the email, said people familiar with the situation, Activision reached an out of sort out of court settlement with the woman who had also reported the one of the incidents to the police. Mr. Kotick didn't inform the company's board of directors about the alleged rapes or the settlement, said people with the knowledge of the board. Now, unfortunately, what people may take about that is he's being shady because he's not telling the board of directors about awful shit going on about his company. But it's one of those situations. There's a lot to take from that. The power dynamic between male supervisor, you know, trying to get somebody to lower their inhibitions because they know exactly what they want to do with that person after, you know. It's the kind of thing that it is unfortunately regular, isn't it? You know, the idea of getting a woman drunk to have sex with her isn't considered as genuinely terrible as it sounds. Like, it's a hill I'm willing to die on. It is rape. Because you're taking somebody who wasn't going to say yes originally and you've got them into a state where they can't give proper consent if they're blacked out drunk or something. And it's always the woman that gets blamed for allowing herself, so to speak, to get into that situation. But like there's a constant spiking going on about clubs in the UK. And in fact, people are literally like injecting people with drugs to knock them out for that very same purpose. So it is very dangerous to be a woman in society, right? Or even be perceived as a woman in society for those who use they, them pronouns or are non-binary and other genders, you know? This is an ongoing theme, by the way, alcohol, so much so that they're actually banning consumption on company premises. It's an ongoing theme. It's a convenient crutch, isn't it, you know? People, do, a person does something terrible and just blames it on having no control due to alcohol. But I can tell you, I have gotten drunk so many times and have literally never done anything terrible. I'm usually being sick, actually, so I can't get myself into any sort of situations at all. Most people, a person with a moral compass wouldn't do the things that they're doing when drunk. So the idea it's the boozer's problem and not the person doing it, is laughable. I know people intimately that are alcoholics, and even they haven't gone anywhere near doing this kind of thing. And, like, the booze literally controls their entire life. So, like, you cannot sit here and say it's the alcohol's fault and the supervisor wouldn't do that otherwise, you know? He made that choice. It's just another sad... In indictment of human resources departments where you know you go through this assault it's the most traumatic thing that you've ever witnessed right you then try to get some help with people in the company who you thought would help you when you're at your wits end and they don't so you spiral even further down and then you have to relive it all to the police who didn't even charge the person at the end of it so it was a complete and utter waste of time. So you relive the worst moment in your life to people who probably doubted the situation or, you know, couldn't really do anything about it for whatever reason. And you've, you just continually mentally spiral down and down and down. And then, you know, you have to go through lawyers and the stress of, you know, whether or not you'll win or not just to get like an out of court settlement, you know, that's your supposed justice. As if they could give this woman a billion dollars, right? And it still would never cover the pain of the trauma that she's going to have to deal with for the rest of her life. So, it, as always, it, it goes without saying, but I do feel a lot of empathy for all of the people that have suffered under working at Activision Blizzard, you know? Like, just go back to the unfortunate employee who actually killed themselves over this, which originally got, like people talking on social media about wanting to hold the company accountable, you know. People's lives have been forever ruined because of this dastardly company, and unfortunately one person's life has ultimately been lost. 
There's fine margins here, you know, with this kind of thing, honestly. That's what's so callous about it, because you know the human cost that comes with it. Just as somebody who knows that people who have been through similar things, it's honestly one of the worst things that could ever happen to a person. And it seems so regular at this fucking company. You know, there's so much shit he's kept from the board. And I'm not saying that's the main takeaway from this. It just shows he's a bit of a shady prick, isn't it? And that's going to get so much worse the further we go down, by the way. Like, I don't care about the board of directors losing money over their investment on an Activision Blizzard. In fact, I actively hope that's happened. Because, you know, personally, if I was somebody who'd invested a lot of money in Activision Blizzard and hadn't known about what was going on because the CEO didn't tell me or whatever, the moment this come out, I'd sell. I'd sell because, I mean, yeah, you'd lose money, but the amount of people who have enough money to invest in Activision beyond board of directors, losing a bit of money isn't really a huge problem to them, is it? You know, the moment I found out that this company's awful, I, I'd cash out, to be honest. I wouldn't want to have that association, really. You know, profit is not worth this at all, ever. Since the California lawsuit, Activision has received more than 500 reports from current and former employees alleging harassment, sexual assault, bullying, pay disparities and other issues, according to people familiar with the matter. And obviously, the Activision spokeswoman says that they're investigating using teams inside and outside the company but you know i've often said there has to be a desire for change from the ground up to do anything about it not just token gestures and on the subject of token gestures that i've criticized in the past the co-head of blizzard announced in august was already gone by the end of september she lasted a month because she had her own stories the story she mentions, by the way, isn't her um, sexual harassment story. It's just her story sharing about what Mr. Kotick knew about the damaging atmosphere of employees at the company. For the record, I just thought I'd make the context perfectly clear. She doesn't have to say, nobody has to say their story to relive it to the press if they don't want to, you know. That, that I'm not ne I'm not going to deliberately go, well, it didn't happen then if you don't want to relive it to a reporter who then puts the report out and then you see the report and then you see people in the comments of that report questioning whether it even happened to you. Who wants to go through that? It's a horrible thing. In August, Activision named longtime employee Jennifer O'Neill to be Blizzard's co-head, making her the first woman to lead one of the company's business units. The following month, she sent an email to a member of Activision's legal team in which she professed a lack of faith in Activision's leadership to turn the culture around, saying it was clear that the company would never prioritise our people the right way. Miss O'Neill said in the email that she'd been sexually harassed earlier in her career at Activision and that she was paid less than a male counterpart at the helm of Blizzard and wanted to discuss her resignation. I have been tokenized, marginalized, and discriminated against, wrote Miss O'Neill, who is Asian American and gay. You would think, right, if you're being investigated by a branch of government, no matter what branch of government it is, and one of the things that they're investigating is pay disparity among sex and racial lines, right? You would make sure the co-leaders of the company are being paid the same, wouldn't you? That's the very least thing you could do. What did they think was going to happen? They genuinely might have been able to get away with this with developers because developers, you know, would feel insecure enough to not say anything potentially because they wouldn't want to face consequences or maybe they would join with the ongoing effort to you know see some change maybe they'll join up with abk or something but you're doing this to literally the person who is now head co-head of blizzard what did you think that they were going to happen that they were just going to accept that 
No, not in this current climate. People are putting on the pressure and they want to hear people's stories about what's happening about Activision Blizzard. So of course she's going to do the brave thing and speak out about it. She described a party for an Activision development studio she attended with Mr. Kotick around 2007 in which scantily clad women danced on stripper poles. At the same party, a DJ encouraged female attendees to drink more so that the men would have a better time, according to another person who was present, you know. Go back to that first story we were thinking about and the supervisor plowed a woman with drinks to, you know, take advantage of her. It's an ongoing, like, that's, that's a, what the DJ is pushing people towards, effectively, there. Or referencing. It's an open secret at the company. You know, 2007, this goes back to. It probably goes back much, much further. And we'll never really know the full extent of it. Because these things go underreported. Because of public backlash or internal backlash. I just find this bit ironic. Mr. Kotick disputed that Activision is unwelcoming to women and said examples of the misconduct identified by the journal are exceptions that don't reflect the company overall. Well, that's go back to age very, very poorly. Also, you know, if you're a female developer, Activision must be one of the last companies you would absolutely want to work for at the moment. The only manner that I could think you would turn up there is if you look at it and go well there are more available opportunities than maybe at other companies that's the only way i think you could work there otherwise you're putting yourself at massive risk working at this company so people within the company who are familiar with the leadership say mr kotick approves high profile hiring decisions and the exit and pay packages of star developers and he is typically aware of any major problems in each of activision's 12 development studios and three major business units according to people familiar with his leadership which it's important that you think about this context with what i'm about to say now dan bunting co-head of activision treyarch studio was accused by a female employee of sexually harassing her in 2017 after a night of drinking. There we go again. You can see why they're banning alcohol. According to people familiar with the incident, Activision's Human Resources Department and other supervisors launched an internal investigation in 2019 and recommended that he be fired. So the one time, the one time Human Resources does something about it to a powerful person within the hierarchy, there's always a bigger fish. But Mr. Kotick intervened to keep him, these people said. Mr. Bunting, who led Treyarch through the production of several successful Call of Duty games, was given counselling and allowed to remain at the company. Counselling, for the person who did it. Counselling. Counselling, by the way, is a way of, yeah, it's different to therapy because you get emotional support, you know. I can only imagine, it's like, boo-hoo, I did this awful thing, oh, feel sorry for me, kind of thing. Versus, like, they, don't, they didn't offer anything. What do they, like, if you're going to give someone counselling, give somebody who's been on the end of this fucking cunt. Oh. So nobody who can say that they care about, like, workers within their company. You cannot claim that when you kept a harasser because, you know, he's overseen your most profitable Call of Duty games or whatever. Fuck Kotick. And it gets so much worse from here as well. There's occasions where he has taken action on Javier Panameno, right? Because he had sexually harassed two women at the studio. The second incident, there were no charges brought either, unfortunately. But the spokeswoman has had something interesting to say. An interesting in a bad way. Because she's kind of doubting the claims of one of the survivors in this regard. So she's saying that following the two incidents, the employee said that she was too intoxicated to remember what happened. Now, with this situation, that doesn't mean anything. You, you would think those rational sceptics around you, how can she know what happened if she was plowed with alcohol? That's what maybe many people are thinking, but you have to take into account many men at this company were plowing women 
with alcohol to have sex with them who wouldn't normally, right? So that's the goal, isn't it? If you are, put yourself in the mind of an abuser here, isn't that the goal? To give them so much alcohol that they don't even remember what happened, so you can potentially get away with it. So that doesn't mean the story is untrue at all. And I think the only reason that's being mentioned is to raise a few doubts with the story. So, you know, the spokeswoman knows what they're doing and knows the reaction of what me people may say by bringing that up as being like a bit of a twat in this scenario. But Mr. Pano Menno's re recollection of the second encounter conflicted with the employee's report to the police. So they're trying to do a both sides thing here. And then saying, well, well, the female employee hadn't reported the incident to the company before she left. But like many times covering these stories over the past, you know, six months or so, HR didn't do anything about it. So let's just say you're in a close network of friends and you know somebody else that's gone through it. You're not going to report it to the company because you, you presume, probably correctly, that they're not going to do anything about it. You just want to take the safe option and just leave the environment for your own mental health. That's how I read that anyway. Now, this is something that's been kept very quiet, and this is where we see the real Bobby Kotick, in my opinion. Over the years, Mr. Kotick himself has been accused by several women of mistreatment, both inside and outside the workplace, and in some instances has worked to settle the complaints quickly and quietly according to people familiar with the incidents and documents reviewed by the journal. In 2006, one of his assistants complained that he had harassed her, including by threatening in a voicemail to have her killed. He settled the matter out of court. This is what the fucking Activision spokeswoman said in regards to that, you know, acting like a fucking mob boss there, or I have you killed. Mr. Kotick quickly apologised 16 years ago for the obviously hyperbolic and inappropriate voicemail. He deeply regrets the exaggeration tone in his voicemail to this day. If you've been harassed by someone, right, and so anyone, I have on multiple occasions, and you get that, how are you going to know? How are you going to know about context? It's a convenient defence, isn't it? It doesn't matter if he apologised 16 years ago. It's relevant to this because he is a harasser saying that he takes harassment very seriously at his company when he's been found out to keep the truth from the investors and, you know, quickly settle this out of court so nobody ever finds out about it. It's obvious he's a giant liar. Well, I say giant, he's tiny, man. In 2007, he was sued by the flight attendant on a private jet he co-owned. The flight attendant claimed the plane's pilot had sexually harassed her, and after she had complained to the other owner, Mr. Kotick fired her. The defendants denied the allegations. In a separate action related to legal fees in the case, an arbitrator, citing what he said was a sworn testimony, wrote that Mr. Kotick told the flight attendant and her attorneys, I'm going to destroy you. Seeing a pattern of behaviour here, the rich really do think they're like untouchable, don't they? They can do whatever they want to their employees and nobody's going to be able to do anything about it. In 2008, they settled by paying the attendant 200,000, which is chump change to him. In 2020, about 30 female employees who worked in Activision's esports division wrote an email to their unit leaders saying that female employees have been subject to unwanted touching, demeaning comments, exclusion from important me meetings, and unsolicited comments on their appearance. He was aware of this as well. They say they fixed the situation by providing diversity and inclusion training. Yeah, that, that'll fix it. We won't get rid of the people involved. We'll just give them some training, you know. How not to comment on somebody's appearance. What a fucking joke. Former Blizzard technology chief Ben Kilgore faced multiple allegations of sexually harassing female staffers over the course of several years. 
According to people familiar with the matter, during a company investigation, Mr. Kilgore lied about whether he had a relationship with a lower level employee. Some of the people said he was fired in 2018 in a move approved by Mr. Cotty. So, for the interest of fairness, they do have to report when he has done something, because if they don't report that he's done that, potentially Kotick could come out with evidence saying I have hot fired people in the past so this is like this is fake news or whatever but this kind of shows the culture within the company Michael Morhaim the former head of Blizzard sent an email to the employees thanking Mr Kilgore for its contributions over the last four and a half years weird you'd, you'd, you'd thank someone for their contributions when they're being fired for something heinous. Now, in their 2020 letter, the female esports employees complained about the feeling of defeat when an abuser exits the company with positive public farewells, as you would expect. It's humiliating. He is an absolute piece of shit. How can you expect Mr. Kotick to take it seriously? The whole harassment and abuse allegations when he himself has a terrible past. Maybe if you were being charitable, you could say he was lying or he was over-exaggerating that voice memo in 2006, right? But then he said the year later during a dispute with someone else that he's going to destroy them. It's a pattern of behaviour in my opinion, you know? He needs to fucking go. And the problem is, when he goes, that's not the end of it, you know? I bet they have so many employees who have been fucking dreadful over the years that they're just going to have to sift through all of these allegations and hopefully hand out the punishments that are actual punishments, not just sending them on diversity training of how not to fucking harass women, you know? Get rid of them all. You have to. Because if you don't, you're just allowing them to carry on and potentially do it again. And it's a smack in the face to those people who were on the end of it, so that they'll leave for their own safety. It's quite clear that Activision really is rotten to the core, led by a fucking prick, and still employing, like, horrendous people who have abused other members of the company. It's so rotten that you can't really fix this company, but you can make it better for the individuals, and were Kotick to go, it wouldn't drastically change overnight, nothing does. But it would show a sense of, you know, maybe a little bit of they're actually prepared to do something about it. These little wins can technically be taken where you want. You know, the J. Allen Brack thing, of course, has aged poorly because, you know, they put somebody in as a token gesture. And then she left because she saw that she was the token gesture and nothing more. And that they weren't committed to doing any, anything at it. And like Activision now have to try and convince the public, but more importantly, their own employees, that they're actually willing to do something about the prevailing culture at their company. Because it's not isolated incidents. They're banning alcohol because they know the consumption's so bad and people are using it to deliberately have their way with other people on company time, you know? Which is vile and disgusting, by the way. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Um, I'm going to be taking a break from videos for a while unless this situation develops. I am going to be working on that, you know, second remastered video kind of thing but I kind of want to make it a bit like a video essay kind of thing you know so I don't know when it will be made motivation permitting and the like and brain stuff you know um but yeah I want to try and make it a really good video kind of well thought out and you know reasoned kind of thing so it might take a while so I don't know when that'll be out I don't know what will be out next I have no idea but yeah anyway um, I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.